Good morning. My name is Kate Weff. I am with Maynard Castillerson, and I am introducing Derek Hicks. From, uh, he is one of the founders of PN3 and has been with the company for 20, over 25 years. And Derek, you can go ahead and take it away from here. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm looking forward to sharing our purchasing and AP automation offerings. There will be two components to today's webinar. I have a very short, and I promise it'll be short, very short slide deck where I'm just going to walk through high level the value proposition of purchasing and AP automation. And then I'll transition into a demonstration so that you can see P and 3 in action and hopefully determine that it might potentially be of value to your organization. So without further delay, uh, let's go ahead and jump in. I do want to reiterate that if you have questions, please post them. Don't feel a need to hold them. We'd like to answer questions as I'm walking through because it may relate to something that I've just demonstrated. And if I'm still on that page, I can, can better answer your question. So let's go ahead and, and get today's session started. I'd like to first talk about, you know, what are the objectives of our tools? What are we really looking to accomplish for organizations? Um, and what we hear quite often is, you know, our purchasing or AP process is extremely paper-based, and we're looking to get rid of the paper. But, but as we drill down into what they're really looking to accomplish, it tends to fall into three buckets, the first being improving process efficiencies. You know, as we know, purchasing and or AP touches virtually every department. So our objective obviously is improve, to improve the process for the accounting and finance team, but also to improve the efficiency of the process for all other departments as well. Secondly, and having been in this for over 25 years, we found that there are many different policies and procedures that organizations have implemented as relates to their purchasing policies or their AP policies. And so we give them the ability to configure PN3 to guarantee adherence to their policies and procedures. That obviously makes their management team happy, but their auditing team as well. And then lastly, with everything becoming digital, there's no longer, I wonder where this transaction is. I wonder who has it. Did we file it correctly? You have visibility into the process to more effectively manage your workflows as well as manage your digital filing of all of your transactions. We have two offerings. We have an offering that combines purchasing and AP. We call that our procure to pay offering. And then we also offer our AP tool as a separate component for organizations that don't issue any purchase orders. On the purchasing side, staff can create requisitions, route those for approval. Once fully approved, you can create POs. On the AP side, we have a variety of different transaction types. Vendor invoices is one. PO and non-PO invoices, and we'll talk about both in today's demonstration. Expense reimbursement. Reconciling staff credit card spend. Maybe there's a need to request payment to a vendor when you don't have an invoice and you're not going to get one. The payment request form is used for that purpose. And then we also have a form that can be used to route contracts for financial and legal approval and then track expenses against the contract. Users can access PN3 from a browser. We also have apps for mobile phone users, iOS and Android. If we can turn on functionality that would permit a user to approve or reject the transaction without having to log into PN3, the approve and reject buttons being enabled or uh, embedded in the body of an email message. We also offer as an outsource payment processing, the ability to process payments through our partner, CPay Plus. 
Payments can be processed via a MasterCard virtual card, ACH, and check. We can integrate PN3 with many different financial systems. The ones you see here, this is where the majority of our projects are. The Microsoft suite of tools, as well as Sage Intact. We're going to transition into the demonstration now so that you can see PN3 in action. So I'm going to come out of my slide deck now, and I'm going to log into PN3 for Payables as Pamela Hood. Pamela is an AP user. So you'll notice PN3 is browser-based. I'm accessing PN3 from a browser. We offer two options for deployment, either an on-prem deployment where we install the software internally on your servers, or the PN3 cloud. To your users, it's, it's virtually transparent which deployment method you're using, because they're always accessing PN3 from a browser or an app on their mobile phone. Now, we find the best way to give you a feel for how PN3 works is to go through some workflow examples. Therefore, you're going to see me log in as different users. Currently, I'm logged in as Pamela Hood. I'll log in as other users just to facilitate processing a transaction. I'd like to kick off today's session talking about the various ways that we can receive invoices into PN3, and I'm going to come here to what we call our eCapture module. eCapture is pulling in the invoices that you're receiving via email. We ask our clients, if they don't already have one, to create a dedicated AP email account and instruct your vendors to e in email the, your invoices as PDF files to that email account instead of sending them in traditional mail. The PN3 system is monitoring that email account. When we see a message come in that has a single PDF file attached or multiple PDF files, we grab each invoice and we pull it into this table. So I don't have to log into that email account, print attachments, save attachments. All of my invoices are here. I'm going to open up one of the invoices. You'll notice that on the right-hand side here, I have my invoice, and on the left-hand side are my header fields. And you'll notice in this example, my header fields are already populated. I've identified the vendor, the vendor ID, and I've captured invoice number, invoice date, invoice amount. That's because PN3 can save a template for that vendor so that when the next invoice comes in, it knows where to go on that vendor's layout of their invoice to find invoice number, invoice date, and invoice amount. If this happened to be the first invoice I'm processing for this vendor, these fields would be blank. I would identify the vendor from the dropdown. It pulls in their remit to address. I would key in invoice number, invoice date, invoice amount. And I would tell PN3 to create the eCapture template so when the next invoice comes in, it knows where to go to find those data elements. In this case, I processed invoices for this vendor before, so it's already grabbed the data. This first invoice is a non-PO invoice. Pamela, the AP user, says, I know that Mary deals with this vendor, so I'm going to send the invoice to Mary. She also wants Mary to recommend the coding, so she's not going to code it. She's going to hit save and upload. Off this invoice goes to Mary, and it simply presents the next invoice to her. So all of the invoices that are in this table are presented to the AP user one at a time so they can address each one. Now, if the invoice is tied to a PO, if you're processing POs, I can do that as well. So I can link the invoice to the appropriate PO. It pulls in the line items from the purchase order, and I can do a two- or three-way match invoice to PO, and you can have business rules that determine whether the match has passed based upon an exact match or whether your organization permits some tolerances or variances that considers the invoice still fully approved against that PO, even if it's not an exact match. However, we have some clients that require approval through the workflow of PO invoices as well. It really depends on what 
to policy and procedure in your organization. The point I want to make here, though, is that you can process both PO and non-PO transactions. You can also, if you want to automate the routing of invoices, I can link a manager to a particular vendor. In this case, automate, I've linked automate to Mary Jones. So instead of me having to select, I'm going to send this invoice to Mary. It populates her name, and I could even tell PN3, I don't even want to review those invoices that are coming in for automate. Because we know it's Mary, just automatically route it to Mary which means that it won't even show in this queue, it routes to Mary automatically. So there are a lot of ways that you can set up you know, really configurations to streamline your process. Now, having said that, not all invoices are gonna come in via email. However, most of our clients today tell us they get 70 to 80% of their invoices via email. Many, the vendor had reached out and suggested that, so they don't have to print and mail. Others, they reached out and made the request and the vendor complied. Having said that, there's still invoices coming in in traditional mail. So I can scan a batch directly in if I have a scanner connected, or I can go to a network scanner, scan there, and import the batch. I can also import credit card charges. Now, we can get an automatic feed from American Express and over 14,000 financial institutions that may have a MasterCard or Visa. However, if you don't have an automatic feed, or we don't, for the financial institution that you're using, you can download your credit card charges and use the PN3 credit card import to get those charges in. And I'll show a little bit later in the demonstration how easy it is for staff to reconcile those charges. And then lastly, we can also import invoices from a spreadsheet. These are all available to anyone who's an AP user. I'm going to sign out, however, now as Pamela, and I'm going to sign back in as Mary. If you recall, we sent an invoice to Mary as we initiated one of the first workflows. Mary receives an email alert. The email alert has a link to the login page. So I'm going to log in now as Mary. As soon as I log in, I'm presented with what we call Mary's task list. A lot of clients call this their inbox. There are two transactions in Mary's inbox. The second one is the invoice that we just routed to her. So I'm going to open up and take a look at that invoice. Mary can see the invoice. Doesn't matter where she is, at home, in the office, traveling, she can still participate in this process. She reviews the invoice. She's a manager, so she can approve it. She can reject it. Or maybe she looks at this invoice and says, I can see in looking at my audit trail that this invoice came from Pamela. And she sent it to me, but, you know, I don't really deal with this vendor. I'm going to send it back to her. She can select route and tell PN3 that I want to send the invoice back to Pamela. And she can put in a note to explain why she's doing that. I'm going to cancel that because ultimately I want to approve this invoice. I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to come down to approve it. But I notice quickly that there's a coding required message above the approve button. That's only because I checked that box in the workflow setup that says if we send an invoice to a manager that's not coded, we want them to code it as part of the approval process. That's the only reason why this text is there. And if I hit approve without coding, I'm going to get a pop-up informing me that coding is required. Mary says, perfect. I'd like to code it anyway. There are three ways that every user can code an invoice. They can select add coding from spreadsheet, drag over the spreadsheet and import the codes that way or browse to it. They can key the codes in by selecting add new coding. This coding dialog will be however you're coding in your ERP. Do you have a string? Do you have a account and a drop down for each segment or account and drop down for each dimension. However you're coding in your ERP, we set it up for you to code that way in PN3. You also have the ability, which is a nice flexibility, to limit which codes are available to a given user. Maybe there's some users you don't want to have access to every code that's active in your ERP. Under that user's profile, you can control which codes they can see. They'll always see the numeric value and the description. 
because outside of accounting and finance, the description is probably even more critical because sometimes they just don't know the numbers as well as the accounting and finance teams. But I can code by selecting from a drop down. I can also, if I didn't know the number, I can key in my description and filter the drop down by description as well. In addition to this option, another very efficient option is each user can have his or her own default coding for a given vendor. And Mary has default codes for this vendor alert because she processes an invoice just like or very similar to this on a monthly basis. So she selects retrieve default to pull in her default distribution lines. In this case, there are four lines equaling this invoice amount. If she needed to make edits or delete lines, she can. But she says this is perfect. However, I'd like to drill down to see impact on my budget. So she selects budget info, which shows her for each distribution line, the annual budget. The committed expenses will show in this column. The budget balance, annual budget, less committed in this column. These are the transactions that are in the workflow awaiting approval coded this way. And this is what her balance would be for each distribution line if everything is approved. So she has a chance to see real time the impact on her budget. Now this is really more of an FYI on the AP side because if I've received the invoice, it means I've procured the goods or services, I've, I've been, typically I've, been, I've received them or I wouldn't be getting an invoice, so I need to code it accordingly. But on the purchasing side, seeing insight into the impact on budget is really, really, really critical. Mary says, I'm approving this invoice now. However, in this workflow setup, Mary is a first line manager, and in this organization, first line managers have an approval limit of $1,000. This is a $12,015 $12, invoice. What that means is that when Mary approves it, we're not gonna route it to AP because it's not fully approved. We're gonna automatically route it to Mary's manager, Susan. Mary approves the invoice, off it goes to Susan, it presents to Mary the next transaction that's in her task list. Mary happens to have an organization American Express card, and these are the charges on her card so far this statement period. It shows the date of the charge, the supplier, and the amount. Mary says, oh, you know, I don't want Amazon to hit my general ledger, so let me go ahead and I'm gonna put in a description of what this was for. These were some office supplies that I ordered she can then code that. Again, this coding dialog will be however you're coding in your ERP. Mary also has the option of splitting this 9792. If she needs to spread that over two or three different lines, she can split that and allocate it across multiple distributions. She can also, if she has her receipt, she can select add and scan or import. Typically from the browser, I'm gonna hit import and I can either browse to my receipt or this table will show Mary her receipts because we give each user the ability to email their receipts in and we segregate them by user so they can easily access the receipts that they need as they're processing their transactions. If Mary, by the way, was in the mobile app, she could use her mobile phone to take a picture of the receipt. So there are a variety of different ways that I can reconcile my credit card spend. I can do that in the browser as I am now or in an app on my mobile phone. Having said that, I could have also coded and approved that invoice and to see the invoice from my mobile phone as well. I'm gonna come out of here as Mary, not gonna save any of those changes. I'm gonna log back in, or for the first time really, as Susan. Susan is Mary's manager. I'm logging in as Susan now because she has that invoice that Mary approved. Again, it's in her task list because it exceeded Mary's approval limit. Susan can see that Mary approved it, date and time, and that Mary coded it. Susan takes a look at the invoice. She looks at the coding. She says, all of this looks great to me. I'm ready to approve this as well. We're not issuing POs to this vendor, but I do have a contract. And I'd really like to see the contract as I'm looking at the cost in this invoice. And I'd like to see how much we've paid against the contract so far. 
instead of having to come out of PN3 to do that, all she has to do is link the invoice to the contract. As soon as that linkage takes place, two things happen. The contract is attached. All she has to do is hit view, and it presents the contract. She can also drill down to take a look at the value of the contract, what's been paid, the balance, and when it expires. Again, we talked earlier about process efficiency. We're trying to put as much information at the fingertips of staff that will enable them to do the necessary due diligence but do it in an efficient manner so as not to slow up the AP process. Susan says, perfect, I'm ready to approve this. Susan's approval limit is $25,000. It exceeds the $12,015 invoice amount, which means when she approves it, it doesn't have to escalate to her manager. It's fully approved. I'm gonna sign out here as Susan, and I'm gonna sign back in quickly as Pamela. Pamela is the AP user. And we'll see that the invoice has returned. It's now back in Pamela's task list. Pamela can open it up. When she looks into the milestones, she can see that Mary approved it, date and time, and then Mary also coded it. And Susan approved it, date and time. She can also review the coding. Now, she doesn't have to look at this and say, you know, this is a $12,015 invoice. I'm curious, I can't recall, do these managers have the approval limit of sufficient to approve this? She doesn't have to guess at that. She looks at the status in PN3. If the status says it's manager approved, that's her assurance that it's fully approved. And because it's fully approved, she can now pass this to your ERP. If you're using an ERP that requires AP batches, we add it to an open batch. If you have a batch open for the period this invoice is going to, if not, we'll create a batch for you. If your ERP does not require AP batches, we'll create an AP bill, AP voucher in your ERP as soon as AP hits the approve button, either here in the header or down near the distribution. Immediately, the transaction is passed to your ERP. At that point, if you're not outsourcing the payment processing to us, you will process the payments, and that payment information will copy back to PN3 so that your staff can see the full status of the transaction. I'm going to sign out here as Pamela, and I'm going to sign back in as Mary. We've talked about vendor invoices. Let's talk for a second about the payment request form. Again, I'm only using this form when I don't have an invoice or I know no invoice is coming in, but I need to get a payment to a vendor. Quite often, it's a deposit, but we see other use cases as well. In this case, I'm saying I need to get a payment to this vendor, First Street Graphics. It's a deposit payment. This, by the way, is a client-defined dropdown. You will set up your purchase, your payment request types. We see it used for refunds, credit memos, but in this case, it's a deposit to this vendor. And as a user, I'm letting AP know I need to get this payment by the end of the month, by July the 30th. And I'm going to fill this form out, putting in a description of what it's for, the amount of the deposit. I'm going to select some codes here just to quickly code it. Save that line. I can enter in additional lines. The sum of the lines becomes my transaction amount. Your ERP is going to require an invoice number, so PN3 generates one. I can attach backup, and I can route this payment request for approval. Once fully approved, it goes to AP to review it. When AP approves it, it sends it to your ERP the same way it would any other AP transaction. Again, I'm only using this when I don't have an invoice. In addition to the payment request form, there's also an expense reimbursement form. And by the way, I can also process payment requests for my mobile app. The expense report form, which reminded me of that, is that's where our mobile app originated, probably about seven years ago. A lot of users said, it'd be great if I could fill out my expense report from my mobile app, take pictures of my receipts. So that's where it started, but it's expanded to have almost all of the functionality in PN3. From the browser, as an example, I could tell PN3 I'm doing my July expense report. 
and maybe I'm going to have expenses all month, so I'm going to select the 1st through the 31st, and I add expenses as I go. I had an expense on the 1st. This is a client-defined drop-down. This is a lodging expense in this example. Double Tree Hotel. I put in my amount. I'm just going to select any codes here. I save that. I can hit Add to attach backup, scan or import to attach my receipts. Again, if I'm on my mobile phone, I can take a picture. I could enter in additional lines. I can also enter in mileage. So if I needed to use my vehicle and I had a trip on the first as well, you'll notice when I select the date, it pulls in the reimbursement rate. This is controlled by your PN3 administrator. What's the reimbursement rate for a given date range? So now I have my date. I can put in a description of what this trip was for, but I need to either key in the mileage or let the software calculate it. We integrate with MapQuest for calculating mileage. So if I'm not keying them in, I can select from a drop down or key in a starting address, same as an ending address. And when I tab out, it's going to calculate the miles, multiply that times the rate to determine the amount. So I can enter in mileage lines as well as out of pocket expense lines, save the form add to it throughout the month or week or day, whatever the period of time is. And when I'm ready and I've attached the required backup, I can route my expense report for approval. Let's come out of the expense report form and I'm going to talk about quickly two other forms. Contract requests, I can route contracts for financial and legal approval, as well as I can create workflow, workflows excuse me, for the approval of new vendors. Let's talk for a second about reporting. I'm going to log back in here as an AP user, Pamela again. As you can imagine, at any given time, there might be many transactions in the workflow, vendor invoices, payment requests, expense reports. As I'm responsible for managing that process, an AP user wants to see what's going on. Now, we know PN3 is sending automatic reminders to staff when they need to take action, but I'd like to know what the status of my transactions are. So there's a report in PN3 that we call the Open Transactions Report. This is everything that's in PN3 that has not been sent to your ERP yet. We break the transactions up by age. All of my transactions, 0 to 30, is in one distribution for one category, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, 91 and greater. But for each transaction, I can see who the vendor is, transaction number or invoice number, date, amount. And this column shows me whose inboxes is sitting in right now. So I never have to guess the status of transaction. I can view this report or all reports. I can print all reports and I can export all reports to Excel. I can also use this first column to drill down to the transaction if I choose to do so. I could have said, you know, I don't want to see it for every user. I want to see everything in this user's inbox, and it shows me everything that this staff person has. If the staff person's away and we need to get action taken and they didn't turn on their out of office and assign a delegate to act on their behalf, AP can reroute transactions from one user to another. And as you can see here, there's a long list of reports that you can use. It's not intended to replace the financial reports in your ERP, but it is intended to help you manage the workflows. Also, I mentioned earlier that PN3 eliminates the need to maintain a paper-based filing system. And as you can see from this page here, there are many fields I can use to query the system. I can check by company. If I'm processing transactions for multiple companies. I can check by vendor name, vendor ID, if it's in AP batches, batch number, PO number, contract number, by various date ranges or amounts. I can query by how it's coded, what accounts are they charged to, what departments or cost centers, whatever your GL structure is, those fields will present here. But in this example, a very common search is by vendor. I'm telling PN3, I want to see everything for this vendor productivity. 
We do a lot of business with this vendor, so I'm going to narrow my search to January because I know the invoice I'm looking for was a January invoice. So I select the 1st through the 31st of January for this vendor. Now, most clients apply security to control who can see what. But having said that, when I hit search, all of the transactions I can see are returned in this search result. So I can see this transaction. If I want to export the search result to a spreadsheet, I can. I have the ability to individually open up and look at the transactions. I open up that first transaction so I can see the invoice. I can see the payment status as well. Now, in this case, we show the integration with CPay Plus, our payment processing partner. But if the payment's coming directly from your ERP, we record how is it paid? ACH, check. What's the payment number, payment date, and payment amount? So I don't have to call AP to check on the status. I can see the status in PN3. I want to get to the next invoice in that search result. I simply hit the next button, and it takes me over to the next invoice. If I wanted to combine all of these invoices into a single document, I can select this button and it will generate a PDF, one large file that has all of the invoices that are in this search result. Let's talk for a second real quick about purchasing before we wrap up. I'm going to sign in to purchasing as Mary Jones. There are two ways that staff can generate requisitions. I can open up a blank form, or I can generate a new request from an older PO. So if there's a vendor I do business with often, instead of starting with a blank form, I can open up one of their old POs, create a request out of that, and edit as necessary to start a workflow for my new request. Requisitions are routed for approval. Once fully approved, you can generate POs. And then you can receive against those POs and ultimately invoice against those purchase orders. So this concludes the demonstration portion. I'm going to get back to my slide deck real quick, just cover a few more items. This slide deck has some customer quotes in it. Um, the webinars are really intended to in introduce you to what some of the PN3 functionality is. It's not intended to take a deep dive. If a client wants to learn more, we like to set up a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you to learn your requirements and see if PN3 might work. If it does, we can then present a proposal. So thank you very much, Derek, for your presentation. Um, it was, of course, smooth as always. If you guys have any questions, you can always email me. Again, it's Kate Watts, so kwatts at mannersolutions.com. You can always email me and ask questions, and I can get you hooked up with Derek to go ahead and see any additional pieces that you need and kind of get everybody introduced. At this point, that's the end of the presentation. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Kate. Thanks to the Manor team. Have a great day. Bye-bye.